Jay Baba. Um, thank you, Baba, for for giving me. I it was nice to immerse myself in Mohammed. What an interesting phenomenon. What to say? And Erico um, uh, is really uh, he was Eric uh, Erico, who was his caregiver for golly, I don't know, long time, years. Uh, he wrote this beautiful memorial to, to uh, Mohammed when he died, when Mohammed passed, he passed in 2003. Um, and I, I thought that what I would do is just read, read, read parts of it and then, or read it and then intersperse with a little video that Ruthie made, which is really nice. And then, um, uh, so kind of go back and forth with um, with what Eric Erico wrote. I can't read it all, and I really recommend that you. Uh, I put the link to it um, in the chat. You uh, look it up. It's just this the most. Um, he's to, it's it's great love there. He really loved Mohammed, and it really yeah. Um, you get that feeling. Okay, so I'm just going to start. I'm going to read kind of the first part. Then we'll see a, a, a little video which Ruthie made, which was sweet. Of, of and, and I think you'll, you'll relate to some of those pictures having heard a bit of this story. And then uh, and I'll read some more. And then we'll, I'm going to uh, end with er Erico's, uh, Erico and Mohammed. And then I hope you guys have sh have stories. I have one, I have one inter interaction with Mohammed. Okay, so here we go. Um, Mo Mohammed was the youngest of fifteen children, in, in a little village called uh, Sonawadi, uh, along the coast of uh, of Maharashtra between Goa and Bombay. They just lived in a little village. They he named him Tukaram. And they called him Tuka. So he was he was the much, this is Erico now. Tuka, Ram, Tuka was the much loved youngest child of the 15 kids in his Hindi, Hindu extended family. Thus they all called him Nanabao or little brother. Nanabao was very fond of his aunt Kaiserbai. He grew and learned his father's trade to make pots on a wheel and to fire them. It sounds just like, like a, an idyllic little life in, in the village, you know, uh, the way he describes it. Uh, so he learned his father's trade to make pots on a wheel and to fire them. Later, the family trade evolved into a brick business. Mind you, in a subtropical jungle in the early 1900s, fired brick was a high-tech enterprise. Years later, after he, after he had lived in Maribaba's court for many years, Nanabao, as they called him, um, known to us as Mohammed the Must, showed with, and described to me how he used to fill up the rectangular wooden forms with clay, consolidate the mass with a paddle, and then set the raw brick to dry in the sun. He attended a village school briefly, for a few weeks only that convened under a tree. He was plump and happy. With his childhood friend, Sakaram, he played when they were not working, climbing trees, gilidanda, forms of tag, marbles, kite flying, balls, and hence ball games were rare. They swam and played in the stream and they explored the, the dense forest. Sorry about that. There were lots of Oh, excuse, excuse me. Ah, I think. Uh, oh, never mind. Gone. He's outside. Um. So there was lots to see: peacocks, monkeys with black faces, snakes, fish, frogs, and occasional tigers. Tukaram, Tuka, well, that's Mohammed, grew and married Lakshmi. She was a kumbar like him, small, pretty, fair, and graceful. She wore a red sari and green glass bangles. They had two children, a girl, Sakubai, and a younger boy, Gangaram. Their family prospered. The young men, Tukaram and Sakaram, would stroll the plaza, the bazaar after work, and occasionally play gambling games for fun. 
Suddenly, Tuca began to win constantly with no effort. He could hardly ever lose. They had difficulty carrying home his winnings. They would both have to fold up the front bottom flaps of their shirts to make a large pouch and fill it to transport home the loot he collected. Shortly after this extraordinary turn of luck began, Tukaram awoke early one morning, as was his habit. His wife and children still slept soundly inside the grass-roofed house. He stood up and tied a large red cloth around his waist, as he did every day to serve as underwear. When he narrated this to me, this is Erico speaking, for the first time in the early 1990s, Mo paused here for a moment and then said, and then it happened like that. <laughs> and sharply snapped his fingers. What was it that happened? I asked. I became a deva, he said. What did you do then? I asked. He told me that he had then stretched both his arms directly above his head. He stood to show me how he had remained standing, dazed and ecstatically entranced in that position, clad only with underwear in his hut for about 12 days. At the end of that time, the trance began to weaken. He put on his sandals and clothes, gave his money to his wife, told her goodbye and left for Bombay, eventually arriving there by train. He said he had not been a seeker before then in this life, but that in his previous life, he was named Vitol and had been a priest in a small Kandava temple. Kandava is regarded as an incarnation of Shiva. After many years there, he fell in love with the statues of Kandoba and his two wives, Banu and Malsa. When that happened, he left the temple and its duties and stayed by himself in the jungle. Years later at Maribad, the servant girls would gather before him to sing Kandoba hymns, and he would silently weep in joy. He told us that he simply sat in the jungle and ate occasionally if food was given to him until he eventually passed away and was born into the family of Lakshman because Lakshman was a good man. Returning with our story to the events of this life, Mo told us that he went to Bombay because so many Dalinder, which means unkempt, Bawajis were there. Upon hearing this, I puzzled a few minutes trying to grasp the meaning. In daily conversation at Maribad, Mohammed the Must would often refer to respectable old Parsi gentlemen as Bawaji. They were hardly ever unkempt. Eventually, I understood that he meant, since there were many other musts in Bombay, he was naturally drawn there. His problem in Bombay was how to eat. He did not know how to get food. Eventually, he hit upon a plan. In Bombay, there has been for many years a thriving numbers racket, colloquially called mukta, a big clay pot. Mo referred to it as Chagapunja, six to five. It pays out 600 to one. How many folks addicted to playing? How many, many folks are addicted to playing. There are also many tipsters preying on the gamblers. Some of these sharks pretended to be mystics or musts to lure their customers. So Mohammed, Mohammed pretended to be one of these shysters. That is, a real must imitated a fake one. He would give the number for free to a few people. Some would play his number. Some would return to offer him a share of their winnings. He would then ask for something else. Instead, a cup of tea, a slice of bread, a samosa. While living on the street in the Bendi Bazaar of Bombay, sleeping under a tea stall at night, sustaining himself on chugapunja tips, he was nicknamed Mohammed as a token of respect of, by the neighborhood's inhabitants, who included pious folks as well as prostitutes, all of whom recognized him as a man of pure heart. 
It was here that Pleader found him, gave him his first meal in several years, and proposed a visit to Rahuri by train to meet Pleader's dada, elder brother, that is, Meher Baba. At his first meeting with Dada, he said simply and movingly that he did not recognize Dada at first, but that they both immediately wanted to embrace each other as they did. They, were both, they both were filled with great happiness. He said four or five days later, he recognized Dada as indeed Dharma Cha Dada. In this context, Dharma means all the religions of mankind. Dharma Chadada would be the respected elder brother of all humanity's face, faiths, that is, the avatar. Okay, so now with that little story, I'm going to play this sweet little video clip that, um, that Ruthie did. Okay, let's see. Uh, Hari par mat malahur mas God yes dan hu Hari par mat malahur mas God yes dan hu Hari par Mat malahur mast God yes dan hu ahur mast God yes dan hu hari par mat malahur mast God yes dan hu ahur mast God yes dan hu hari par mat malahur mast God yes dan hu hari par Mat mala ahur mast God yes dan hu Hari par Mat malahur mast God yes dan hu Hari par Mat malahur mast God yes dan hu Hari par Mat malahur mast God yes dan hu ahur mast God yes dan hu hari par mat malahur mast God yes dan hu ahur mast God yes dan hu hari par mat malahur mast God yes dan hu hari par Mat malah ahur mast God yes dan hu So that 
with Mohammed and his many over the years. Um, uh, so again, I I have put. The, I'm going to read a little more from Erico's uh, re reflections, and I put the link to uh, to that whole whole. It's about. It's quite long. That whole story in the uh, in the chat. And uh, and after I'll read a little more. Then we're then we'll see a movie of Erico, who was Mohammed's caregiver for years, with with Mohammed. Okay, so this is Erico. He says, Mo would repeat for us from time to time his Baba stories. They were simple, evocative, highly compressed recollections of incidents accompanied by graceful illustrative hand gestures. Dada would bathe me with hot water like this. He would hand feed me rice like this. He would embrace me like this. Dada clapped his hands sharply like this and all the people came at a run. Dada walked very briskly. When in the mood, Mohammed would imitate members of the Maribad ashram, alive or dead. Sidhu always sang, Mukara, Mukara, thy countenance, thy lovely countenance. Padri shouts like this, your esteemed mother's butt. <laughs> he farted like a rifle shot. Pendu always says, brother, just let it be. Chanji Seth was typing on the veranda once with just one hand and with the other throwing pebbles over the bamboo partition to pester Nilu doctor until Nilu finally yelled, who is throwing those stones at me? And I told him it was Chanji. In the morning, Nilu doctor always spoke to the cooks thusly, sister, Kindly tell, what will the, be the vegetable today? Masaji was an old fighting cock and had a furious temper. <clears throat> so Erico says, he, in, he intensely enjoyed his reminiscing. There was obviously a kind of professional rivalry between Mohammed and Bapji, the other fifth plane mate must who lived at Maribad for a long time. Inquiries about Bapchi inevitably drew forth imitations of Bapchi's indecipherable style of speech. Bola ke bola, after having speaking speaks, <laughs> and then with exaggerated seriousness, Mo would confine that Bapchi was miat, mad. Further evidence was tendered to support this. Do you want to hear? Shall I tell you now? Wait, I'm going to tell you. Bapji would shit while standing up. He was shameless. <laughs> I have seen many folks ask him, where has Baba gone? And he would generally ignore this question or become irritated. It was the wrong question. If instead, if asked instead, what does Baba look like? He would enthusiastically reply something like, his face is pure white. His hair is absolutely black. Thus prompted, he would often then volunteer. Baba speaks or would speak. Mo would use either tense. Like this. The sound he made was a humming sound in his throat. I gathered that in his first days in the ashram, before he intensified his silence, Mayor Baba did not speak, but hummed to him. And I suppose that for a man in the mental sphere, God is both always silent and always speaking. I took the hoo hoo sound that Mohammed produced to be the gross plain shadow of the divine word he always heard. Oh, let's see. What was it like to live with this old wizard? 28 years ago, he was not the gentle sorcerer of later years, radiant, commanding, sitting leisurely, warming himself in the morning sunshine, wrapped in a blanket like an exalted E.T. He was very jalali, fiery, 
like a ferocious Zen master with an occasional fondness for bars of soap and handkerchiefs. His nakedness, that is the perceptible presence of his very alive emotional heart was always at the surface of his being, direct, exposed and expressive without any artifice. The things we knew, cared for or thought about, uh, uh, the things we felt important, he spontaneously gave up in an instant long ago, oh, in an instant long ago. So the immediate impact of both his utter indifference and of his fiery intent to forge ahead in his way of loving God was stunning and awesome to all. Padre said, Mister, he is as simple and guileless guileless as a child but mind you a tiger's child so at this point i will share part of the movie eric of erico and um uh, uh mohammed and there are three little things that happen and i'm going to explain because it's sometimes hard to understand uh the speaking the for eric the, the, the very first, Erico jumps in with a story about a person who was quite mad, who came from Bombay, need, needed to be on, on uh, pretty heavy doses of uh, psychotic uh, uh, drugs to control the psychosis, uh, and immediately went off of, <laughs> and so, and how they dealt with that, and what Mo's comment was that uh, he, um, he, he, he pointed out a beehive to Erico and uh, was getting, was sort of, uh, uh, his point was that the mind is like a beehive. And then the next little, oh, uh, little part is um, uh, uh, the, the Baba lover, Curtis uh, Roosevelt, grandson of the president of FDR, uh, a Baba lover. Uh, came uh, and he, I think he had a position as a um, maybe not quite a, in the church somehow, and he wanted he wanted to he was hoping that he would get a, uh, some wisdom from Mohammed. He was hoping for a discourse, and so and then but Mohammed had something else in mind. <laughs> and then there's the last little excerpt. It was funny. I hope I can get it. Uh, uh, <laughs> Mohammed used to make noises. Uh, they called them dinosaur noises. <laughs> and uh, he somehow, and there, were, and there was another uh, must there at the time who Erico describes as a, as a real, um, uh, a caveman, real blunt and not very appealing. And, and Mohammed sort of trained this, um, this, this other must to behave better using these dinosaur noises. So those are the three stories that you'll hear, um, and just just uh, hopefully that will make them a little clearer if, if they, you're, they're hard to um, understand. Okay, uh, where is it? Oh, let's see. Oh, let me think. Eric Nadell. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got to go back and cue it up. Uh, Oh, right here. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay, it'll take me a minute, I think, to get this up. Oh, here it is. I, yeah, all right. There we go. On tranquilizers and stuff, and he came here, and he was here about three days. He went up the hill, and he read in the library, "God in the pill." You know, drugs. Right. Okay, yeah. drugs. Yeah. So he assumed that meant not to take the you know, five kgs of uh, stelazine and yeah. you know four pounds of thorazine that he was taking yeah. every day to keep his wired on. Mm -hmm. And um, she stopped taking, and he became unglued very, very quickly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 
and we had this uh, incredible, uh, you know, mad person on our hands. Yeah. So then you really had So to... what happened was, the day he arrived in Bombay, Mo was sitting where he is now, and right opposite him in that tree, right behind you, there was a big bee's nest in the night that stuck there. Yeah. Beehive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I came walking by the morning and said, Hey! I said, what's new? He said, hey, take a look. Beehive. See the beehive. Yeah. So I think these guys, you know, the father says he's on the fifth plane, you know, he's got some insight and yeah. stuff like that. I don't know. He knows something, I don't know. And um, So I'll look at it. So I say, yeah, I'm looking at it. And he says, look at it. See the beehive. See the honey and stuff like that. So I look at it. And every day thereafter, he points this out to me in the morning. See the beehive. See the bees. The bees will sting you. There's honey there. You yeah. know, but the, you know, look at the beehive. And so every day he, he points this out to me and he laughs. And I say, yeah, I'm looking at it. And uh, I don't get exactly what he's driving at, but I'm just doing what he says. <laughs> Meanwhile, this kid comes here from Bombay. I'm in New Zealand, Bombay. He comes here, flips out, and we have our hands full, you know, taking care of him. And uh, we have two people with him all the time to prevent him from doing himself in or bashing his brains out or something. Yeah. He was really unhappy. And uh, he's hefty eye, plus he had the uh, sort of un unimpeded energy of the truly insane. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I, I had studied judo, so I could handle him myself, but no, nobody else could. Yeah. And everyone else got tired of this and burned out, you know, and would take out. Oh, I'm taking a couple of days off. This madman is making me nuts. You know? yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but I kept on thinking that there was some way we could communicate to them. Like, here, we're, here we are in Baba's place. If there's any place where it's possible to get yeah. through all the fog, would be here. And, you know, what an unfortunate life he had. And maybe he wasn't so mad to begin with, but after being institutionalized for 15 years, he was drugs and everything was definitely like this. I, I was thinking about all of this stuff and, you know, trying to think about, thinking about healing this guy who was just totally nuts. Yeah. And uh, real absorbed in that and worried about it and thinking about it all the time. So much so that one morning, I'm walking down the veranda here, most of where he is, and I just don't see him or the veranda or anything. I'm just thinking, now, today we'll try this, and what are we going to do with this kid? And, yeah. and he's so unhappy and stuff. Yeah. And as I walk past in front of Mo, he looks at me, you know, in my little days. Yeah. I'm, on, I'm in a day yeah. at this point. And he, he shouts at me, Look at the behind you, idiot! Look at it! No? Yeah, so I, all of a sudden it's like a, I mean, like a whip. You know, and I look at the business, and suddenly it dawns what he's talking about. The beehive, anything for him is an image of mind. Yeah. Anything. Anything yeah. he looks at is an image of mind. So the beehive is a good one for him to... He understands it. At, he can understand yeah. a shoe as an sure. image of mind. I can't, but the beehive is one that I can understand. Yeah. He's saying, you know, the mind is like this... The beehive. Honey, beehive. The beehive, yeah. right? Yeah. Same guy as the beehive. Well, no, any mind is like that. Yeah, all mind. And, and the, there's honey in it, there's sweetness there. Yeah. If you know how to get it out, you're a good keeper. Yeah. And if you fuck around, pardon me, you get stung. Around, like, yeah. like me, yeah. you get stung. But a guy like him, he knows how to handle this stuff. No problem. Yeah. So yeah. leave the beehive to the beekeepers, you know? Yeah. Leave the mind, worrying about the mind to the masters of mind. Yeah. Just, you know, feed the guy and don't yeah. break out of him. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. But, it, it, but, but it is interesting, but it took me a while to understand that that's how he talks. But for example, there's this guy, you might know him, Curtis Rosado. Uh, I'm not sure. He, he's uh, he's uh, Rosado's grandson. Oh, really? Yeah, he's a nice chap, very nice oh, yeah. chap. And he's currently, he's head of the, he's the chancellor of the university in the UK now. He's a Bob lover. He's a very, yeah. very, I mean, he's such a nice person, so refined yeah. and, um, 
good manners. Yeah. I just feel like this true uh, caveman is talking to me. But, huh? So, he came here, his first trip, and he, he's a, he, he, he comes from a very strong Christian orientation. Yeah. So he, you know, has his, at that time he would have his conversations with God, very earnest, and really sincere. Yeah. 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 Well, that's the way, you know, that was important for him. So he's sitting here. Yeah. 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 Says, you know, Mo is like this, and he's read about Mo, and he says, does he ever give talks? And he must be very inspiring discourses and stuff. I say, nah, he And Mo sort of turns around and looks at this guy. Jay Baba! You know, it's like, yeah. hey, that's none of that. This is that. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is fine yeah. for starts, yeah. that quiet, gentle thing, but I mean, yeah. when, it, when you get down, it's just, loving God get is down. a kick. Yeah. yeah, get down, you know. So then, so I thought, well, that was, you know, that was like his one line yeah. discourse to this guy. Yeah. This guy's a, he's head of a university. Yeah. You know, he's got that mind. Of mind. So he says, well, he says, sure he doesn't give any discourses. And I think, well, he's not good. That, you know, I couldn't explain to this guy that that, that was a discourse. He just, Mo. Got yeah. he just got it. I said, no, no, he never does. And then Mo, then the, the woman brings him his papaya. Yeah. And, uh, but, and we're talking about God speaks and how, you know, oh, yeah, oh, that chapter, you know, the cycles of evolution and evolution of consciousness and the beyond, beyond state. And, oh, the whole thing about the whim I've never known about the, that, you know, the latent impression of the yeah. nothing in me, everything and stuff like that. And we're talking about that. And he's being really sort of excited now, this yeah. guy, you know, got his hair down a bit. And Mo is sitting there with his papaya and his spoon. <clears throat> he sort of looks up and says, it all comes from a little black seed. Yeah. End of discourse. Yeah. <laughs> well, papaya, you know, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. But that's all, you know, also it was like exactly what we were talking about. We're yeah. talking about the universe growing out of the, the whole thing, out of the whim and everything else. It all yeah. comes from a little black seed. <laughs> that was it. And the discourse, that's all we can get. The first three years here, he gave us instruction in the sense that. <clears throat> All he would say to us is, whenever you meet us, he would say, this is Dada's chair, this is Dada's stuff, this is Dada's house, this is Dada's wood, this is Dada's floor, you know, this is Dada's water, this is Dada's food, this is Dada's tap, this is Dada's tape, everything, in short, he wasn't t telling us, the, giving us the general principle, everything his daughters, he was giving us specific examples, and I, it's kind of like what you do with a kindergartner. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I think we flunked kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> we never got any further lessons after that. He decided we just didn't have the aptitude, but he wanted to teach us the most important thing. Yeah. 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 Muhammad was the first musk that Baba worked with in the no, lab. I don't think so, no, no. No, no. no. The first was some kid who just had wandered in. Yeah. Uh, they called him Mustafa. Um, I don't think he was, he was the first... Uh, there were a couple of Mustafa stayed along. Yeah. And... Uh, No, I think there were a number of months here by the time Mo came. Yeah, yeah. But he never had any no. desire to leave once he... No. Yeah, no. which is unusual because most of them choose, choose to leave because they can't take the work anymore. It's too much. Mo, a great time. Two biology. Punja punja ka atwan alaka Baruji Alaka atwan Punja 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 Paila ka punja Did you see punja? Did you see punja? It was another mask Wokia kia Bajte na 
मासा दिखाओ मेरे लोग का अच्छा अच्छा वो दबा हुआ बज रहा है ये एक प्लेट ऑफ टिक कैम या ड्रम मलकाया ने He wasn't not seven coats. You're talking about. Uh, is, uh, you see him in the wafers. Yeah, with the, yeah. With the, uh, he played on the, the tin drum. Yeah. 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 Tin drum. Mm-hmm. Or does there seem to be any, anything that? I mean, musical or anything else that Muhammad ever liked. I mean, as far as he his, sings, his, he sings. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. you sing? Uh huh. What does he sing now? Yeah. What's his favorite uh, sort of a? I mean, is it, is it, it, it obviously a devotional song of some nature or something, or what is it? That he that sings. He, uh, he sings songs of his own devising. Yeah. And it's hard. They're hard to follow, but they're things like that. The sun has come up, um, or uh, Baba standing on the hill. I saw Baba standing on the hill. This hill. Yeah. Or he'll say. Uh, I remember one. Dadani Berlia means Baba has filled it up. Baba has filled it up. Dadani Berlia, Dadani Berlia, Dadani Berlia, Dadani Berlia. But he makes up every time he sings. It's a new song. It's a new song. Yeah. So it's just, it's very spontaneous, right from his heart. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But he really wails. Yeah. Gayan Devacha Gayan. राते का बाबा देवच गायन फाइन है सी नाउ इज अब्जॉर्ब्ड इन हिज या व्हाटएवर ही इज अब्जॉर्ब्ड इन सिटिंग इन द सन या सो इट्स रियली नो आई डू नो इट्स इट ऑन का दिस इज हरि हरि आई थिंक ही सेट द
then I said, well, has, do they still make dinosaur noises? Because I was staring at the hill and I was like, yeah. and Heather says, oh yeah, great dinosaur noises. You wouldn't believe the dinosaur noises he's making these days. Um, so we both started imitating the dinosaur noises. Yeah. And um, Heather was real good at it. Yeah. Uh, she does, uh, she does, uh, <laughs> Prefixing this guy's name to one of the dinosaur noises. Yeah. And then there's. Who is it? Good evening, sir. Is there some work you have for me? It's Valria. Yeah. It's the blockhead. Yeah. It's the imbecile. It's the caveman. Yeah. The man who can't talk. Yeah. You know, when he. And we realized that. We watched it happen. It's like. But Mo had trained him to respond to the dinosaur to the noises, dinosaurs. and he would respond more or less like a normal human being. Yeah. It, it's odd. You prefix something, his name, to a dinosaur noise, and then ask him to do something, and he would do it. Oh <laughs> 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 was communicate with this guy. It was too, it was too bizarre. <laughs> So he, he had the, I don't know. the tap on the source. He knew yeah. how to call him. He had to call Bauria. Yeah. 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 Bauria, Bauria. Mm. Bauria Chabatkia. Atunala Bauria Chabatkia. Bala Halami Bauria. Whatever happened to him? He got really, really, really old. And, you know, he couldn't walk much. So, when it got too, too difficult for him to walk from the village, yeah. he graciously retired. Yeah. I was thinking, you know, want to go over to that Hazard um, Glory Shaw's place? Because that's pretty much where it actually starts. Can you show him something that's been recorded to the yeah, side? Sure. No, that's easy. Okay. Show him a picture. Okay. Of me, so. Now, what I can do is do it like this. I can take a picture here of him. Put it on the so, so I can take different still pictures of you and, and, and you can see it different. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Who is it inside? <laughs> Who is it? Okay. And then uh, okay, it's like this. I yeah. know, yeah. Let's go. I'll do that right now. Interesting. So what happened was oh, you get the uh, check in. He doesn't even walk around with a hat. <laughs> so what happened was uh, someone insult made some insulted remark about Baba. Yeah. Because they're all Orthodox or Astros. Yeah. Buddy. And uh he just had some excuse to leave. Yeah. So he got up and walked from the compound and the orders in those days, standing orders were, he goes and he plays the boys, the monthly had to follow him. So they all came after him. Yeah. He came out here and he sat down. Mm -hmm. Three. 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 
Someone went to the village and got a bucket. They lost their impact. And then when the Sandwisha came that, that night or the next day, uh, it got some food from the village. That is everything. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I could not figure out how to turn it off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, well, at the, oh, I'm, yeah, I apologize. That was really, actually, I recommend that video. Um, I put, the, I, here, I'll put it in again. I put the link in the chat. Uh, it's a great video of Erico with with Mohammed, but and also what you were hearing was him um, uh, taking people around to the Gilori Shah, Shah tomb and and showing them um, uh, and, and tell, telling the story of Gilori Shah and then also the big well that he was walking. This was 1988 when this film was taken taken. So. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not so good with this stuff. <laughs> um, so at this point, I wondered if um, if anybody wanted to tell, share a story about Mohammed. There any time? Um, uh, hmm. uh, I had one time. It was 1987. Um, uh, I, uh, me and uh, two other women, uh, uh, Christy Pearson and uh, Betsy Tal, where Baji took us all down to see Mohammed. Um, I hadn't had much, you know, I might have seen him, but I had no, hadn't been introduced or anything. So Baji brought us down there to the, his, his room in the Dharmashala and uh, uh, you know, we just, just we were we greeted him, and then he asked Bauji. Uh, Bauji asked Mohammed, "So tell us," he said, "about how about their future, how or how their life, how." And he pointed to Christy and <laughs> Mohammed. It, it felt to me like Mohammed was like kind of reluctantly going along with Bauji to. Um, you know, to, uh, like, uh, uh, and Bauji was kind of getting him to, I uh, it was a, get to, to tell our future. So anyway, Mohammed said, uh, Mohammed said to Christy, success. And so Bauji turns to Betsy and says, so this one, he said, success. And he, and he said, to, and to me, he said, she'll be okay. <laughs> so that, that was my memory of, of <laughs> Mohammed. Um, and if anybody else would like to share, um, that would be great. <laughs> or otherwise, uh, <laughs> um, oh, I can't tell you. I Like I said, I put the link to the movie um, and uh, to Erico's story, which is just beautiful. It's a long story and there's, uh, you know, I couldn't read it all here, but there's great detail and he writes it with a lot of love. Rosalie, <clears throat> you got something to share? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I do remember once the dinosaur uh, noise. I only heard it once, but uh, it seemed like, uh, I was with a group uh, and uh, Minu Barucha was there 
and um, Mohammed um, said something very quickly, I guess in Marathi, I don't know, Hindi Marathi, and, and uh, Mino Barucha says, Mino Barucha uh, had been Upasni Maharaj's chauffeur, is what I was told. And um, anyway, he's, he told me, Mino says, uh, Mohammed says you're caught in his net and you are not to leave and, until he says Baba, you know, till he okays it with Baba. So everyone left and I, I, I have to admit I was certainly afraid of him. I knew he was a must. I knew ba Baba favored him and didn't like you to displease must, but um, I um, I sat on a little bench in, in Mondeley Hall and he was over on his bed. There was a, a quite a distance and I was singing every song I could remember, singing and singing and singing and a lot of time was passing, and I'm starting to think, oh, um, it, it's getting kind of dark. And then I was, my fears were creeping out. I thought, oh, and I, but I could see his coffee, his, his little white on the bed. And, uh, and but I, I have to say, uh, the impression I remember of listening to him was I could have been singing to a, a, a small child that wanted to hear your song again and again, just wanted to hear your song, or I could have been singing off in the wilderness to nature. And it was quite a beautiful uh, feeling. And, uh, and then, you know, uh, the sun was starting to set and I'm thinking, oh dear, um, I don't want to miss Artie. And, um, and then the light went on and it, it might've been 10 seconds later and it went off. And then I was like, kind of feeling tense. Uh, and then I thought, geez, what about, what if I miss a dinner? <laughs> <laughs> All these thoughts going through my head. It was so funny. I said, oh, of course, they'll save me some food. Uh. And then, then uh, it was getting quite dark. And all of a sudden, he did the dinosaur sound. And he, he got off his bed. He left off his bed. And, and I left off my bench. And I says, Mohammed, what do you want, Mohammed? What do you want? <laughs> you 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 want Padre? You want Minu? What do you want? And it's the dinosaur. <laughs> and then, but then I heard him say, da, 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 da. And then I thought, Jay Baba. Because <laughs> I remember that's how he said Baba. And I went, ooh, out, out of there like the road runner. <laughs> <laughs> So, Rosalie, say again, what did he say to you? And he said to you that you couldn't leave. Can you say yeah, that? Again? He says, he, he said I was caught in his net <laughs> and that I was not to leave until he said Baba. But, but he was, you know, Minu was receiving the message and then everyone left. And then I would just stay there because I knew Baba didn't like you to displease the us. And plus, I was. I was very curious uh, at a distance. <laughs> Did Minu stay there with you? No, no, <laughs> no, I was all alone. Oh my goodness. In the Mondeley Hall and, you know, it was different daylight, but then when it, hours were passing, I don't know how long it was like, it was daylight when, when I, I was left there with him and then but boy, when he got up, that when he made that noise, the dinosaur noise, wow, well, I, I flew off my bench. I said, what do you want? What do you want, Mom? 
So, and did he want you to sing? Were you singing for him? I was singing and singing. I, I sang oh. every song I could remember. Oh my gosh. And like I say, it was very beautiful because it, it was like singing to a child that could had to hear your song, you know, you wanted to hear your songs. <laughs> and then, um, or, or nature, you know, it was just a, it was just a quiet about it, you know, really like kind of a deep quiet till he did his dinosaur sound, you know. And it broke, it broke the, the silence. Wow. What a and, story. Uh, That's a real story. Yeah. How long, yeah. How, long do you, how long do you think it was? I didn't have a watch, you know, and I don't know, but I, I was I was pulling songs out from childhood. I mean, just <laughs> everything. And uh, oh, what a pickle you um, and, and just a this one other time, uh, when I was introduced to him, I think by Bao Kalchuri, there was a, a, a group of us. And um, I was introduced, this is Rosani Muhammad, and someone, I would imagine someone that didn't, wasn't friendly towards me says, that's not Rosalie, she's crazily. Oh, no. and, and then Muhammad jabbered off something, <laughs> and and uh, the translation was that I was only half crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I rather like that. <laughs> and one one other time. Uh, Mm -hmm. Mandali Hall had a, a, away from the Samadhi side, had a, a sink. And Muhammad was playing in the water one day at the sink. And I used my one word, Pani, Pani. The water was dripping or it was, so I go, Pani, 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 kind of like a playfulness. And I go, and then the water would come down a trough. I go, Pani. Pani Baba. And I just kept doing that. And I brought him a, a little package that I got in India of um, candy cigarettes. It was like kind of rectangular shape. And I was sitting on the bench and he took it and he was like grunting intensely and Looked like he was going to crush it, you know, like pulling his fingers together. And I, I said playfully, I said, and I had this long skirt on and uh, sitting on a bench in front of him. And he, I said, well, Mohammed, if you don't want them, give them back. And I put my hands out like this. And he set the package of candy cigarettes between my legs on my skirt mm -hmm. and then that's the only time i i he uh, i could feel his skin it was very soft then he he took like this like had the the marriage ring finger and lowered it a little and then the same on the other side and then he went really he could go very quickly he <laughs> You know, it was like, <laughs> yeah, and that, you know, that was daylight and, and uh, there may have been someone around, I, uh, I think, but maybe Tani, the, uh, the cook, Padre's cook, but, uh, you know, it just, uh, and then one, just one other time he, oh, that time I thought, I hope he balanced me. I hope I got some balance there. Same finger on both hands. <laughs> and another time I was kind of dancing around for him and he said, he liked my dancing better than my singing. <laughs> uh, oh. But, you know, it was just very special. Uh, uh, 
I don't know. It, it, to me, it was sort of like, wait, he's a must. Oh, and then he could read my mind. So I knew he, he knew I was afraid of him, you yeah. know, but he never, oh. And then one time, the very first time in India, I was leaving with this very sweet person, if anyone knows Ellen Book, and she brought him a chocolate bar. So we had come from Marazad and we were going to just stop at the Samadhi and then go on to, to depart India. And she goes, and I'm with her, and she goes, Mohammed, I brought you a chocolate bar, you know? And he started growling his, his <laughs> growl and running at us. Oh, no. And I knew it wasn't running. He wasn't running at me. You know, he was, boy, she triggered him. And all of a sudden, Padre oh, yeah. just appeared on the scene and <clears throat> took him out. I mean, took her out, took her. And I, he didn't do anything with me. <laughs> I just went out too, you know. But, uh, you know, it, it was amazing to think, you know, you think he's all bent over. Maybe you can't move that fast. Oh, he was very fast moving. Yeah. Um, so I, I uh, yeah, I really, I cherish those few times because uh, I knew that it was very special for Baba. And well, it sounds like you had quite a bit of time with him. I mean, I would say but this was, a, you know, I've been seven times to India. Mm -hmm. I have five times at that point. So it was over. Uh, and then one time, I don't know. Um, I was uh, on the porch with Mara. She had these little dried fruits and they were in a little silver bowl with a little silver spoon and she passed them around on the porch at Marazad like Prasad. And I liked them and it seemed like no one else liked them. And I, you know, I kept eating them and eating them. And, then time was, you know, I went home and it was like a full moon that night. And I'm kind of lying on my bed and I just felt, I better get to Bob Street. I just felt there was something wrong. And so I'm, I'm walking at a good stride. Then I'm almost running. I'm almost running. So I get to about where Mohammed was. I didn't see him or anything, but so I, I had to take a dump in the bushes. The, the, these, whatever the, the orchard that I had eaten, oh, wow. wanted out. <laughs> and uh, Heather, Heather came to the porch and she says, who is that? Who, who's there? I says, Heather, you don't want to know. <laughs> 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 who knows? Maybe that was contact. <laughs> Oh, that's great, Rosalie. <laughs> what about VJ? VJ? Marichan's got his hand up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Marichan. And then VJ, he got some. Oh. Marichan, are you there? Uh, J uh, J uh, I, I met uh, Mamad for the first time in 1970. At that time, it was the first Tamartiti where there was an a board was put onto the veranda with a rope was tied not to disturb Mahmud Mas. And those times there was not much corners for there. There was only one lady. She used to take care of this thing and Padri was the in charge for that. And one day Padri took all the, some of the people like Bakshi, Gitaram and all of us. And he said, what? Instant which might have all read it in the even in the books it has come. When Padri was going, he said, Oh, why are you going? Dada is coming today, tomorrow here, on 31st January. And uh, the second of uh, this thing is also Padri told us that time he was took a lot of uh, Adi and uh, Mustaji had a tough time in the France with the moment. I don't want to go into all the issues that all recorded. And the one issue, my personal two, three issues is, whenever I used to pass through this thing, 
he is to see like that. When I see, is to bend down his head and ja 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 go 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 is to shout like that. And in 1974 or 75, and we, my myself, my sister, and my mother and our family was walking. Suddenly, catch or he called my sister and he cultured off my sister, and he said he took a, he gave an embrace to her, and then he said, "Give me soap, 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 soap." Means uh, bathing soap. Then my <laughs> mother just went and brought one bar soap and gave it to him, and then he took it, and then he said, "Go, go, Dada will take care. Go," he said like that. Hmm. And one more thing, and during that time, MPC was there in 1984. And that time, uh, uh, when Anil was also there, Eriko took Anil and me also. But he he select he uh, he want to give bath Anil. He said Anil was a little afraid to even touch this thing. But Eriko was there, and Anil had an opportunity to give bath to wow. Eriko. Yeah. Anil, Anil was great, and that way I always I feel little capital J about Anil. Is. Anil marriage was witnessed in the video by the complete woman Mandali and Mandali at uh, Mandali Hall, total video <laughs> and all. That. And uh, Mamad, uh, he has fortunate to give birth to Mamad. And once Ted asked me, "Do you want to take him to walk?" I said, "Okay." And Eriko uh, and uh, Alan Wagner and uh, Ted, three were there. But when Eriko uh, hold on to his to the left, Eriko always just hold his left hand. And then other side, either Peter Booth or uh, uh, some of the residents who were there. This, then he asked me to hold us to the right hand. Suddenly, one time he hold and then he said he called uh, uh, Ted and he took. I just had a touch of him. That's all. And those are the instances where, and any time he always, uh, he never, whenever his people. One time he got annoyed in one of the Amartiti people got this thing. He annoyed him. Then Bauji said, because of annoyed, he brought some rain to the Amartiti. He brought rain. That was 1982 or 83. Not even MPC was not constructed at that time. 82 or 83. I didn't remember the year. And During some time he was very fiery in some some time in uh, in during the eighty eighties late at least or early late uh, late seventy uh, ninth and early eighties he was a knight and lastly I conclude with this thing Baba told him that he won't be have any further enhancement in there he was he was actually in between third and fourth plane and Baba said he was Baba has given him a jump to fifth. Or he won't have an answer, but in next birth he'll become perfect master. Avtar Meher Baba ki chay. Thank you, Meher Chan. I realized I should have. We want to see your face, Meher Chan. <laughs> yeah, a little <laughs> late, but <laughs> yeah. Next time. Uh, anybody else? Vijay, do you have any? Did you see? Uh... Uh, yeah, Jai Baba Bati. Thank you, Marchand. That was nice. And uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I enjoyed the video. Wonderful. And uh, in the video, I noticed that uh, he was so reactive to Eriko. Means he was just uh, all his uh, attention was uh, uh, on the talk. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah so that's interesting usually he hardly pays uh, attention to anyone uh, only few really? and uh, i actually enjoyed uh, a couple of times his talks with uh, ellen wagner mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> it was really fun a lot of fun if If you have met Alan Wagner, yeah. well, so he's a lot of fun. And uh, early days, of course, now he's uh, quiet and serious. <laughs> so <laughs> on the motorcycle, he used to yell at him, "Ah, oh, hello, Deva, Kasakai, 
fine and he used to laugh and uh, like he enjoyed meeting him and uh, so that was really and i was watching them <laughs> i enjoyed the talk yeah i i met uh, mohammad mast in the early days uh, during amrti the maybe 70 71 and then every time when i used to go early days and i used to ask him where is dada and uh, dada kuthe so he used to say dada takri varait dada is on the hill <laughs> and then because uh, uh, see it was the instruction not to bother him also and it might irritate him so just a short and pay my respect and pass on so every every year or when in the middle of many visits to mehrabad always i made it a point to go down and uh, well, say hi to mohammad or just uh, wave him from a distance and uh, and he enjoyed meeting very few and used to call them sometimes soap as sometimes given soup also to my sister he has given soap also so like that uh, he put his scarf around her neck <laughs> so like that uh, so, and uh, uh yeah he was uh, really very intense looking i have mm-hmm. met other most in the early days and uh, like with my father i used to go to mandala uh there i met jamunia ole baba uh, that was uh, and baba met this most in 1949 i understand yeah so mohammad was uh, really intense mm-hmm. intense looking and uh, he was the best <laughs> i can feel that of course i have not met other mas but whatever <laughs> i see in photographs and he was really means you can feel the energy around him and uh, yeah and uh, people and uh, um, yeah So in the movie him. in the movie it seemed like the the bives the women who were helped him they were oh. in a nice very nice relationship with oh, him oh very nice he was like yeah. a be, be, big sister or mother he was, <laughs> they used to really clean his nose and this and clean yeah. wife really they are blessed those ladies uh-huh. we can't imagine that how blessed these ladies are taking care of him like mother okay. uh, makes baba very happy yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe who knows their next part they are born in america and then <laughs> go <laughs> when i see westerners uh, i saw one uh, that boy one uh, two boys from mortal beach kids and uh, i felt like means uh, Uh, their identity is like there were previous arangao guys <laughs> <laughs> you see their soul and uh, uh, their identity is like they be, been here around this maraba previous okay. life and uh, of course uh, so many you know so yeah and uh, which year did he pass i i don't country 2003 two thousand three two thousand seventeen June two thousand three ah ah yeah two thousand three I think uh, before that one C also passed away and then uh, again he woke up from the <laughs> grave and came back it was <laughs> like that <laughs> they dig they dig the uh, they dig uh, the samadhi and uh, they took the hospital and the hospital nothing was found. Uh, Alan lifted him literally. There is also film on that. Uh, yeah, Muhammad. yeah. Okay. Alan lifted and Alan Peter Booth, Ted and uh, uh, Doctor Anne and everyone was there. But he lifted it back. Yeah. In uh, fact, one thing is they always in the afternoons between mid of the between twelve and all that is to come near to the neem tree behind the Rauri cabin. Uh, uh-huh. To make row. Uh, or uh-huh. is mud circle sometimes used to watch on the sky and all that huh. uh-huh. he was 
on to the next door of bambadis erico is to stay on yeah, the last yeah. room next to the old dharamshala yeah. the alan uh, wagner uh, just beyond that uh, dispensary bob street is uh, to stay before that uh, padri kaka is to stay. so he uh, was very close to all the three and also with the train and uh, he is to talk is to understand marathi and uh, no other oh, language yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the reason I didn't have a confrontation with the. Yeah. Thank you, Vijay, for sharing you this thing. Yeah, yeah, Aftar, and uh, yeah, Vijay. And he used to say always, "Chal, ja, ja," um, uh, like. Uh, <laughs> what does that mean? Go. Does that mean go? Uh, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Go, go, go away, go. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes he used to shout also. <laughs> yeah, trash from Bombay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember uh, someone, I thought it was Jane Brown saying that Mohammed had said, and this was shortly before he passed, that the lion was going to come through the window. Oh, <laughs> wow. That is that, wow. <laughs> Yeah, the best part is Baba. He used to make Baba so happy. It means if you yeah. see the pictures with Baba, and Baba looked so happy with Muhammad Mast. <laughs> you can feel that. That uh, yeah. He was also involved in the Second World War, this thing, and he was representing France. <laughs> Oh, you see, Mama. means uh, one cannot imagine that how could uh, Baba take him to France yeah. a trip and how it was managed. Only God can do that. <laughs> Otherwise, my God, they those must have the quality. They don't buzz from their place. They can't move. Uh, it's a... Great thing, and those so many must Baba handle <laughs> thousands. Yeah, so. in, in fact, Adi had a tough time. Adi and Gustaji, he punched upon yeah. the uh, the immigration officer also in oh, the plan. No, oh, so, Mama, yeah, yeah. and yeah. they asked to apologize. And the ship <laughs> captain, in, in a, he asked, I'm not going to permit this man in the ship because he's bad. Please take him away. Adi had a tough time. He said, No, 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 I won't allow him to. But he's always used to like to come to the outside this thing and uh, stand uh, uh, in the ship in between. And he says, say, say, and say, Adi had a tough time. Adi and Gustavi. Baba is to enjoy. <laughs> the, <laughs> only Baba, because of, because of the higher consciousness and uh, this thing, and because of Avtar work, all the officers of Blaisdeep, even Mamatma. That is the Baba's work, real work. Was it, was he, yes. uh, was it France he was connected with or Germany, Mohammed? Mohammed was connected with France. France? Uh, no, just, sorry. I'm extremely sorry. You are right, Betty. Germany. He was connected with Germany. Germany. I'm extremely sorry. Yeah. Germany. Baba I'm so apologize. Uh, Mohammed, uh, he was France. No, no, no. He took to France, but he was uh, representing. German. Okay, that I don't know, but uh, he was uh, uh, in his previous lives, he was in France. Maybe, uh, yeah. Oh, we can find out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I, I remember France here in France. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why he was uh, maybe some Sanskara's impressions got yeah. to be vanished. Yeah. Or yeah. So he was taken there just once. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Vijay, for all you had your memories. Thank you. And Very, okay, too. Yeah. Great stories. Wonder, thank you. Wonderful, most. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you. Nice stories. Yeah. I was hoping to hear the. Um, uh, uh, didn't Eric give an account of when he? When he became a mass, he was... He yeah, was I just read it. 
uh, where he stood up and with his arms up in the air for 12 days. Yeah, it's in that it's in that account. I can read it again. So yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. This, yeah. <laughs> well, he was talking to Eric Owen. He said he um, he was telling his story to Eric Owen. He said Eric Owen says when he narrated this to me for the first time in the early 1990s. Mo paused here for a moment, and then he said, and then it happened like that and sharply, sharply snapped his fingers. Oh. And what was it that happened, I asked. I became a deva, he said. <laughs> what did you do then, I asked. He told me that he had then stretched both his arms directly above his head, and he stood to show me how he had remained standing dazed and ecstatically entranced in that position, clad only with underwear in his hut, for about 12 days. Wow. And at the end of that time, the trance began to weaken. He put on his sandals and clothes, gave his money to his wife, told her goodbye, and left for Bombay. <laughs> Eventually arriving, I guess maybe you were, yeah, here, there by train. I really, Rosa, I really recommend this whole beautiful story. He, he's, Eric O. writes, it's so, it's in the, the link is here. Eric's story, it's so, he writes it so sweetly. It's, it's his love for Mohammed is just obvious in the way he writes. Yeah, imagine. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's so interesting, just saying goodbye to the wife. <laughs> he draws me, well, he had just won a lot of money and gambling, he, he he got really lucky with gambling and would come home with money every night. So he left her with plenty of money. Oh. <laughs> Actually, Bombay, Bhendi Bajar, the guys used to bother him for uh, Sakta, these uh, numbers, number games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's also a big headache, yeah. That was what he, he went to Bombay and he'd started to hang out with... Uh, with sky get there's everybody there the cd kind of you know the fake uh fake musts and and uh, i guess Bendy was was a, Bendy Bendy was a, right yeah. right that and, market is yeah mm. <laughs> yeah and people would come and ask him for you know the, the numbers yeah. And he would give them the answers, and then they would they yeah. wanted to come back and pay him, and yeah. he got he, that's how he got food. He yeah. would ask for food. <laughs> that's what it says here. Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. it, was, it was just nice to see him on that film up close. And, I know and, it was a beautiful. Yeah. Film. Yeah. Very. That's a lovely film. And uh, oh, more Erico talking about all of the lower Marabout was really interesting. Yeah, that's a great movie. It was from L.A. The L.A. people took it. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. And and the uh, and the the Roosevelt. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that who Erico was talking to? Yeah. Who? Uh, it was. Uh, no, he wasn't there right then. But he was telling the story of how he wanted a discourse from Mohammed. And Mama said, wow. it all started from a black seed, a dark seed. That's what he said. It all started from a dark seed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was the one who wanted that discourse. Well, okay, folks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, <laughs> go, go. Yeah, hang, yeah. close it up. So, thank you, thank you all. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, uh, Jay, Jay Baba. Jay Baba. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, I better stop recording.